He is a gastroenterologist, associate professor of medicine at UCLA. We're taking your calls at 888-971-SAGE. That's 888-971-SAGE. Wendy is in Rancho Cordova, California. Wendy, you're on the Larry Oldest Show with Dr. Strom. Well, hi there, Larry. Doctor. Hi. Uh, um, just had a quick question. Uh, just today on NBC, after work, I'm watching, you got that rosin report, and he's got these people on Skype having them do their temperature with various things. They've all supposedly have COVID, but they're all not testing with the high temperature. It's either 98.1 or 97 or, you know. So isn't that the big key? Everybody's taking everybody's temperature to decide whether or not they can go through an entrance or something. But yet here they are with COVID, sick at home and no temperature. Dr. Strom? Well, Wendy, look at temperature is the only objective thing that we can test. When I come into the hospital every day, I get my temperature checked, they spray my hands with a disinfectant, and they ask me if I have any COVID symptoms. Temperature is the only thing you can do objectively because, you know, this virus can be like a cold. You can have a sore throat, you can have a lack of taste, you can have a lack of smell. You could have some shortness of breath. I mean, you know, there's fires here. I mean, everybody can have these symptoms. So the only symptom we can reliably or the only objective sign is the temperature. However, frequently, 40% of patients with COVID are totally asymptomatic, don't even have that. So just because you don't have a fever doesn't mean you cannot have COVID, but it's the only objective measure we can do to determine if somebody may be infectious. And also, if you have a fever, though, it doesn't necessarily mean you have COVID. More likely than not, you do not have COVID with a fever. Joanne is in Chicago. Joanne, you're on with Dr. Strom and Larry. Hi, thank you for taking my call. My question is that if you've had COVID and after your doctor releases you to go back to work and you take another test because your company requires it and you test positive, Will you always test positive, or will you eventually test negative? That's a great question. So you can test positive for a while, even though after 14 days and the test is still positive, probably you're not as virulent or contagious. Now, that test may stay positive for a while. And there's a real debate in the medical community. It was that, did you never eradicate, or is it a reinfection? There were studies out in Asia about reinfection, and we're all skeptical about that. So it's probably you didn't eradicate yourself totally from the COVID. You're probably not infectious. Your boss is going to want you to be negative, unfortunately. But I would say that second test and you're feeling fine is probably just very low viral particles in your nasal pharynx, and it's ultimately going to go away. But you're probably just detecting very, very low viral amounts. We're talking that's to a great question. Great we're question. We're talking to Dr. Kerry Strom, uh, and the number is 888-971-SAGE. Speaking of, uh, of tests, Dr. Last week, uh, University of Arizona uh, said that 13 student athletes had tested positive for COVID-19, which was a single-day record for the school. Then they said, ah, never mind, three days later. Actually, the number of positive tests was just two, meaning that the initial numbers were off by a factor of about six. Yeah, I can't explain that. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing about the numbers that we're hearing. I, I, I don't know what's right and who to believe. It, it's, I just don't think there's any standardization here, so I, I'm a little concerned about that. Richard is in Fontana, California. Richard, you're on with Dr. Strom and Larry. Hi, Larry. Long-time listener. Okay, Sean. here's my question. They talk about te- – well, I got actually two or three questions if I can get them in, but the first one about the, the testing. Are they testing for the virus or for antibodies to the virus? Which are two? Which are well, Richard, there, there, are, there are two different tests. The antibody test is out, but I have never ordered this on a patient. I don't think it's reliable, and it's pretty much a consensus in the community. The antibody test is not reliable yet. So the only way to really know if you have it or not is for the viral particles, usually with a nasal swab. And they do a a sophisticated, I'm not going to bore you with the technique, it's called a polymerase chain reaction. 
It's very sensitive. It's only about 75% sensitive. So it could be that they do a swab on you and you're negative, and if you're negative and you're asymptomatic, that's great. But if you're still symptomatic and there's still a suspicion of COVID, we recommend doing another test and follow-up. The antibody test is for somebody who's been exposed to see if they can mount a response. But it's been my experience and the experience of the medical community that that antibody test is not all that reliable. It's detecting if you had a coronavirus. But we have been exposed to coronaviruses in the past. So this coronavirus is, is a novel one. It's a brand new one, but it doesn't mean that we haven't been exposed to upper respiratory infections or coronaviruses in the past, and that test could detect an older coronavirus as well. So I never order it. I don't use it. I think it's, it's uh, not ready for prime time yet. We have one minute left. Pat is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Pat, you're on with Dr. Kerry Strom and Larry. Yes, hi, doctor. I'm really enjoying this information. There's a Dr. Teresa Deicher, who's a molecular biologist with many patents and so forth. I heard her on the radio saying they didn't, she didn't think they'd ever be able to really develop an effective vaccine. I know they have a product that's based on stem cells that boosts the immune system. She says it's going to be effective for every virus. And I understand it is now in COVID testing and the trials that they're doing. But it's not a vaccine. It's a stem cell. I wondered if you knew anything or had any information about that that might be more effective than a vaccine. Dr. Strom, just about uh, 20 seconds left. Yeah, Pat, I, I don't really know too much about stem cell. I know there's a lot of hype about stem cell in every medical condition you can read about, but I don't have any information on this. Dr. Kerry Strom, seasoned gastroenterologist, associate professor of medicine at UCLA, a frequent guest on the Larry Oda Show. As always, Dr. Strom, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for asking me again, Larry. Thank you. You got it. I need to tell you something about Relief Factor and about Pete and Seth, and never made a big deal out of this. They sell the three.